Roanoke, Texas. Once again, as we come together to share the message that God has for us, we look forward to that message that it might bring honor and glory to Him and that it might address that need that we have in our life. We welcome our church members. We welcome our guests. We welcome our visitors. And of course, we welcome our regulars that join with us each time through our media ministry. We look forward each an opportunity that we have to share the word of God. Because ladies and gentlemen, I think and believe from my heart the absolute greatest need that we have is to bury ourselves into the Word of God, to uh, saturate ourselves in the Word of God, because in the hour in which we live, there is never in modern times been a greater need than to know what the Bible says when it says, Thus saith the Lord. So I trust and pray that you're maintaining daily, daily uh, in the Word of God. But I want to invite you at this time, if you have your Bible, to the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 22. There is a request made in this portion of scriptures, which is the need of the hour. I want us to look at it. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came thereforth to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, now, I want you to notice the last part of verse 21, because I titled the message at this time, The Need to See Jesus. The Need to See Jesus. At that particular time, through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, they were brought to realize what their need was. And the need we have in the hour of today is that we need to see Jesus. We need to see Jesus. Notice what it says. Saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip telleth Jesus. How do we to see Jesus? How do we need to see Jesus? Well, Turn with me, if you have your Bible, to Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. You see in Romans, in, excuse me, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible informs, uh, informs us that believers are to be a witness of Jesus Christ. They're to be those that share Jesus so people can see Jesus manifested through their changed life, having come to Christ by faith, having been born again by the Spirit of God. The Bible tells us plainly that in Christ, we become new creatures. Now these people were interested in seeing Jesus because of the witness that Philip and Andrew portrayed before them of that change that had taken place and the evidence that they demonstrated that they had been with Jesus. Look at it here in Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. See that ministry of the believer is to be conformed to the image of Christ to demonstrate that new life that they have in Christ by their life being conformed to his life. And as they had witnessed 
uh, the change that had taken place in Philip's life and notice also when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, how that they proclaimed their faith in Christ and how that the evidence that they had real faith was the evidence of the image of Christ being portrayed. They boldly stood up and said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. They boldly stood up and said, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. They boldly stood up and proclaimed that without the shedding of blood is no remission. They stood up and boldly proclaimed that for whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone and everyone who was receiving their message of the atoning work of Christ on the cross, proclaiming that the sacrifice he made upon the cross was the atonement made and the payment for that atonement that God the Father would accept. And of course, the great proof of that was the resurrection. But when they saw, when they saw what evidence there was, ladies and gentlemen, today, we need those who claim to be believers in Christ to have that boldness to proclaim Christ, have that boldness to maintain the convictions as a new creature in Christ, our life is to be changed. Sin shall have no more dominion over us. And that we will go forth in His image, in His power, and demonstrate that Christ is alive. He's real. And when they had saw, and when they would heard, you see, listen to me. People have stopped listening because they're not seeing the evidence of what's being proclaimed. But when the Greeks saw what they were proclaiming was real, how that Lazarus had been raised from the dead, how that those that had come to Christ were different, were different. Look at it. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, Oh, my friend, when we fail to share our faith, to maintain our consistency in our walk with Christ, our words lose power. Our words lose influence. But notice what it said. I want you to get a hold of the word they saw. The evidence, the evidence of a person being in Christ is that changed life that conforms to Him, that has the mind of Christ, that desires the will of the Father in their life as Christ did. Talk is so cheap today. Had the Greeks not witnessed the evidence of what they were proclaiming, there would have been no concern about seeing Jesus who they were proclaiming. The reason the world today is not asking to see Jesus is because Jesus is not being portrayed in reality, in the evidence that God has determined the believer to portray. The Bible said very plainly in Christ, we're new creatures. We're not remade. We're reborn. And Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 6. That sin shall not have dominion over us. Oh listen to me ladies and gentlemen. There was a time. When our nation. Could rightfully say. In God we trust. But ladies and gentlemen. Because we have dropped. The command of God. To portray Christ. We can no longer say that. 
Oh, what this world needs. It's the need of the hour. And that is to see Jesus. To see him as the way. The truth and the life. And in order to have peace with God. In order to have that condemnation that all are under outside of Christ. Because all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. We have nothing to offer God. We've sinned. We've come short of His glory. We broke His law. We blasphemed Him. We followed after idolatry. There's no good thing that dwells in the carnal flesh. That's what Paul speaks about in Romans chapter 7. Listen to me. Listen to me. The reason the world is not calling on Jesus is they've not come to know Jesus by the failure. But when the Greeks hear in John's gospel that we just read, when they saw the evidence, the evidence, listen to me, the only evidence that we as believers can offer the proof that Jesus is real is to let people know as I read, go on, and perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them. Now look at the last part of verse 13 in Acts chapter 4. That they had been with Jesus. See, so there was a time when the child of God walked close with God and conveyed his image and conveyed his reality and truth and realness. Oh, listen, I know it's an old cliche, but I grew up in a time period when comments were made about a person. They're just like their dad. She's just like her mother. And listen to me. We are supposed to portray the image that we represent and people will say, don't you know in Antioch they were first called Christian? Do you know Christ-like? That was not the name that the believer gave him or herself. That was the title that the world gave when they saw the believer confirming and showing forth Christ. He was to be or she was Christ-like. We would say in the modern vernacular, they're just like Christ. That's what Christian means. And may I say to our sadness, while there's a lot of believers, Christians are scarce. Those that are walking in that new image, like here, where Peter and John speak with boldness and stand on their convictions and being un unwilling to change the foundation of their faith, which is the Word of God, cannot be deterred from their commitment to Christ. Oh, listen. We can never show a world, we can never show a world who Jesus is without the last part of verse 13, having the witness in ourselves as believers that we've been with Jesus, that our life has been forever touched with Him, saving us, literally bringing forth that, that new person, and by the grace of God, having put off the old life and put on the new life, which is created in godliness and being filled with the Holy Spirit, but giving the understanding of God's Word. There was a time when the evidence was real. Once again, the Christian testimony has no power, has no effectiveness because they're not witnessing 
and showing forth the testimony that they have been with Jesus. Do you know the Bible tells us as Jesus walked upon this earth, the evidence that they had been with Jesus was an immediate change. Remember Matthew, who sat at the table of receipt when Jesus came by and called him to follow him, the Bible said him he left all. There was not a partial change. There was not a casual commitment. There was not a convenient time to accept him. He left all, which is representing the old life. What about Zacchaeus, who was up the tree? When Jesus stopped and said, I must abide at your house, come down. He came down completely. And the evidence that he had been with Jesus was, he said, I will restore fourfold all that I've taken by deception. Look at the great apostle Paul, the chief enemy of the cause of Christ. One of the greatest persecutors of the church we find in the Bible. But on the road to Damascus, when he had time with Jesus, when he met Jesus, when he saw Jesus, you see, when you see Jesus, it will forever change you or you will forever deny him. But when the Apostle Paul saw Jesus, he fell down and said, Lord, what would thou help me to do? And notice that. And because the evidence that Saul became Paul, the effect that he had was that he had a witness, look at it again, that he'd been with Jesus. He who became one that sought to persecute, did persecute, and destroyed so many believers' lives, now became the apostle that his heart's desire was that people would come to know this same Jesus. That they would be set free as he was set free. But the evidence was in that changed life. In the life that he adopted in the image of Christ. His desire was to obey God. His desire was to exalt Christ. The Bible said that he did Determined to know nothing but Jesus and Him crucified. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Christianity, Christianity has lost its effectiveness not because of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. It's we who name the name of Christ. We have dropped the commission. We have failed to be the salt and light unto a dark and thirsty world. We failed to proclaim without a shame or without shyness that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He's not a way to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. And then without Christ, you're doomed for an eternity to be without Him and spend eternity in hell. Oh, listen, you know why we see here when people desire to see Jesus, there used to be that, that hunger. There used to be that hunger. I'm of an antiquity age that I can remember when people had a hunger but there is not even a taste for Jesus in this world today because the evidence that he's real, the evidence that he desires to touch people's hearts and change them and bring them into the, to the family of God. The testimony has been corrupted by the believer and the commission to go forth and be witnesses for Christ has not been 
faithful. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. They took knowledge. And listen to me. I want to give you three things right quickly. That we need to understand. That we need to, to realize the awesome authority that we've had. And to return back to the opportunity to, to have that, that boldness of Christ. Number one. We need to realize that our walk is to be very careful because we are being scrutinized and we need to have a walk that will be true. Ephesians 5.15, look at it. See then that you walk circumspectively. That means very carefully, very carefully because now all eyes are on everybody looking not for success, not looking for victory, but looking for self-justification and something that can destroy a person so that it can elevate the person that's looking for that failure. Oh, listen to me. Someone is watching you. Someone is watching you. And because you are a believer, you ought to be showing forth this picture you're a new creature in Christ because of the forgiveness of sin. You're a new person with eternal life. You have a Savior that loves you, that forgave you, that saved you. And the life of Christ is the only life that brings true fulfillment. Nowadays, listen to me. Number two, our, our, our life needs to be correct according to the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, save people, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that you, as you have received of us, how you ought to walk and to please God so that you would abound more and more. God's people at large have forgot that they're not their own but they've been bought with a price. Therefore, we are to glorify God. It's not our life any longer. We don't have a right to live the life we want to live. We don't have the right to walk as we want to walk. We're to live the life of Christ. We're to walk in His steps. We're to have His image. We're to have His desire. We're to have His Ways, look at it, notice it. But you know, even God's people, too many times, have said this, quit telling me how I'm supposed to live. It's my life. That's wrong if you're a believer. It's the life of Christ. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. We need, we need, this is the hour so people can see Jesus in us. If you have your Bibles, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Oh, listen, this is the call. This is the call to God's people that we might be able to show that we've been with Jesus. Therefore, my beloved brethren, saved people, not the unsaved, they're under no responsibility to live for Christ. They're under no responsibility to walk in the ways of God. They don't know Him. They don't know Him. Paul's talking to those of us who say, I'm saved. I've repented of my sins and invited Jesus Christ into my heart. Somebody witnessed to me, somebody preached to me, somebody gave me a gospel tract. People have been praying for me. One day the Holy Spirit, when the message was presented, opened my heart. I repented of my sins. I trusted Christ. I became a new creature in Christ. I was saved. That's who Paul's talking about. Look at it. He said, be steadfast. Stay the course. Stay the course. God didn't call us to fail. God called us to endure. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as, you know, and for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen to me. 
Soon and very soon, the rapture is going to take place. And may the testimony of every single believer that's raptured be as Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. We are on the midnight hour when time to stand for Christ will become even more difficult. Let me invite you. Let me invite you to be honest and look at yourself. Where are you? Is there any proof, believer, lady or man, it makes no different, young people who, is there really any evidence that somebody would say about you as it was said in the book of Acts? Would it? Hey, they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. Or could you be in the presence and people never even suspect that you know Christ. And then unbeliever, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Jesus loves you. God proved his love by giving Jesus. Jesus proved his love by going to the cross. And the Holy Spirit proves his love by bringing the message of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection to your understanding and showing you the conviction that you need to be saved and will bring you to the fact of faith. You confess your sins. You'll invite Christ into your heart and you'll be saved. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. We need to see Jesus. And the only way we can see Jesus is in those who claim that they belong to him. Can I convict you and me of having been with Jesus? Father, it is truly the need of the hour. We need to see Jesus. We need to see Jesus. And Lord, you've chose that in order to see Jesus, we who know him, we who have been born again, are the image to portray him, to portray him by that new life in Christ, by being conformed to his image, by having his mind, by having his desire to obey the will of the Father and to bid those come and be saved. The Bible said Jesus, he came to seek and to save that which is lost. Oh, Lord, let your children, let those that have forgot or possibly have never even been instructed. We are supposed to be in relationship with the Lord that people can see that we've been with him and they will listen as we give our testimony and share the word of God. And they too then will see Jesus and come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Father, help us in this midnight hour. Oh, help us, Lord, to seize the opportunity to show forth the only Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. The only forgiveness is through Him. And the only atonement for sin is by Him. And let it resonate within our heart, whoever we are, to be reminded this. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. Honor the message and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Until we meet next time, please, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not saved, trust him as personal Savior and child of God. Listen to me. Be sure that you're casting forth the image of Christ so people can know him and want to be introduced to him because we're going to ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.